Hi, welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to talk about array formulas. And we have a brand new example to work with array formulas. In this week's example, we are a teacher. And that's a nice coincidence because of course I'm a teacher and this is actually quite a real life experience of how I analyze exam results. So let's have a look at the spreadsheet that we're going to work with in this week's videos. It is about a bunch of students that are in my class. I have their student numbers, their names, and the year in which they have started. So the names, then the IDs, and the year that they started their studies. And in addition to that, I have exam results. So you see I have a number of questions, I have a list of students, and then for all of the questions I have the perfect score and the score for all of the students. And you might think that I would use this spreadsheet just to analyze the, the marks for the students, but that's not true. I also use the exam results as a means to analyze the quality of the exam. So I have a look at the results and I look at what question actually impacts the scores of the exams most. Let me give you an example of that. So if I look at this spreadsheet, I see that those questions one and two, the answers are pretty similar. In many cases, the same score is given or a very similar score. So if I want to dig into that, what I could do, of course, is take the sum of all the scores for one question and take the sum for all the scores of the other question and compare those two together. And I can see that indeed the difference isn't that big between question one and two. However, that is a bit, is a bit misleading because you see in this, if I would just sum these cells, the sums would be the same, yet the answers would be very different. So the sum is not a good solution to really understand how these two questions differ from each other. So what to do? What I actually want to do is take the difference between all of the cells, between all of the results for those two questions. Let me do that. And Unfortunately, double-clicking now doesn't work because there's an empty column, so I have to really drag the formula down, and then I can see the differences between all the cells. But as you can see, some differences are positive and others are negative. So we need to take the absolute value of the difference in order to get the real difference between two, the two questions. So we drag, oops, we drag the absolute difference down, and now we can see hey, is there really a difference? If we sum these values together, we see that the difference is indeed between those two questions not that big. The difference is 21 and we have 14 students, so that's about 1.5 points per student difference between those questions. So th this helps me. This helps me with the analysis because now I know how these two questions relate to each other. However, I don't have two questions, I have 12. So if I would want to repeat this analysis for all of them, I would have to make a lot of auxiliary columns. Here you see it, there's, there's no end to it almost. That's not what I want. I hope you remember from previous lessons that duplication is not a good thing. If you're doing the same thing over and over, if you're making a lot of columns or a lot of rows that are very similar, you have to think of me. Please think of me and think, oh no, duplication, no good. I have to go back to the MOOC and look at a smarter way to do this. So how to do this smarter? Let me first remove all those duplicate columns. We don't want them. We zoom out a little bit. And we also remove this because we're going to do this in a more compact, in a smarter way. So what we would like to do is at once subtract one, the question one from question two without all those intermediate cells. So this is a good attempt. We just subtract a range from another range. And let's see with the evaluate function what exactly happens here now. We have the first column. If we evaluate it, we get eight, which is the first item of the column. And this is because what Excel now calculates is the intersection. We talked about that in previous le lessons. So this is close to what we want, but not exactly what we want. We don't want Excel to calculate the intersection immediately. What we would want to have is all of the differences. And this is you can guess this probably, where array formulas come in. Because Excel can evaluate this function in two different ways. Let me show you how the alternatives look like. So this is sort of the normal value. The normal way of doing it is what we just did. We paste this formula in. 
And now the alternative way, the array way of doing it, we don't hit enter, we hit control shift enter. And if we do that, we get this nice curly braces around the formula. And this is not good in a sense because we get the same result. So you might think there's no difference. The curly braces don't do anything. However, the way it's calculated is really, really different. What's, what's underneath is different. And in order for us to understand the difference between those two ways of calculation, we need to use type theory. In the first version, the normal version of the minus function, this is what happens. We have the range b3 to b16, and we subtract from that the range c3 to c16. So what happens here is the reduction, the intersection between the two ranges. This is what Excel re returns for a range. So this is. 8, the first intersection, minus 10, the second intersection, which result in minus 2. That's what we have seen. So what happens in the alternative version, the curly braces, the array version? It looks Exactly the same, but what happens inside is really, really different. So in this version, again, b3 to b16 minus c3 to c16. In the array version, no reduction takes place. Excel calculates this subtraction on the entire range. So internally, we have b3 minus c3, and then b4 minus c4, and then b5 minus c5. And I guess you can come up with the rest. And then all of this, these subtractions are calculated, all of them. So we get a list with 8 minus 10, 0 minus 0, 5 minus 5, et cetera. So the result of this array, of this curly braces version of the formula is a list. 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 et cetera. But because there's no room for Excel to plot this entire list, we only have one cell, we only get the first version, the first number in the list. But that doesn't mean that the result is a number. The result is actually a list. It looks the same, but internally it's really, really different. So let's go back and see how this looks in Excel. We don't need the glasses anymore. So if we look in our spreadsheet, we see no difference. However, internally, it's really, really different. The first version results in a number, and the second version results in a list. So what, what can we do with the list? It's really nice that we have a list now, but what to do? How to show and work with this list? So the first thing we can do with an array formula is give it space. Make room in the spreadsheet for Excel not to plot the first number only, but to plot the entire resulting array. So let's have a look at how that looks like. So we're going to remove the normal version and the, the array version so you can really see the difference. We throw them away. In the normal version, if we make room for the entire array, we put in a normal formula, nothing happens. We only get one result. But for the array version, if we make room, if we give it space, and then we hit shift control enter, what happens is we get the entire resulting array. And now you see the list that we had on the blackboard. We have it now in a spreadsheet because we gave Excel room to show, hey, I have this entire array of data to give you and not just the first version. An alternative, what we can do with an array formula is flatten the list make this entire list into one value by adding a function around it. So we have a list, 
And what we can tell Excel is do something with that list. For instance, sum the list. So in a normal version, if we would sum the intersection of two ranges, we just get minus two because the result is minus two. We can add a sum around it, but it will still be minus two. In the array version, we get a different result. Look at how that looks like if we enter the sum around the array version of the formula. Then we get minus five because what happened now is the sum has been calculated over this entire list that has resulted from the array formula. And here you see a comparison with all the separate subtractions. And if we add a sum around that, we get the exact same value. So this, all these separate subtractions and a sum, results in the exact same thing as an array formula with a sum around it. And in this way, this is how we can solve our original problem of wanting to compare all the questions with each other. We don't need an auxiliary column and a sum. We can calculate the entire sum in one cell. And this saves us a lot of space. Let's see how that looks like. So this is all, we don't need that anymore. And we can use it now to calculate the difference between question one and question two in one cell only. So we take the sum of the entire range, the entire B range, minus the entire C range. Of course, we need the absolute, as we did in the beginning. And then Control shift enter gives us the result of 21, just as we had in the beginning. So with the use of array formulas, we have reduced a column and a sum to one cell only. That's the power of array formulas.